Smith & Wesson Model 27 and a Smith & Wesson Model 28 Highway Patrolman. This is a kind of a versus video, I guess. This is the way I'm going to title it. You know, there's, there's other videos out there showing this, but I'm going to do my version of it. Uh, basically, the, the biggest difference between these guns is, is finish. This one is more cosmetically pleasing than this one. This one was meant to be cheaper, um, you know, for police. Uh, you know, when they walk into a store, instead of paying an extra two, three hundred dollars for this one, they get this one uh, with less uh, cosmetic features on it and stuff. is is basically the gist of it. Um, functionally and stuff, it's 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 identical. It's the same gun. And coincidentally enough, in an, in an older model twenty seven with a four inch barrel. Um, are kind of hard to find, you know, to, to, to be perfectly honest, they're way more expensive. So, if, if you prefer a 4 inch, then a Model 28 might be your, your ticket to getting a, a 4 inch. Um, we'll start off with the top strap, man. The top strap on this Model 27, I don't know if how well you can see that, but it's just gorgeously checkered. The whole... The whole top of it back there by the site you can see how it's just it's just checkered and it's just man it's just really cool and I know it ain't coming across on the camera real great fortunately it's 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 hand checkered that whole top strap from the front of that site base all the way back it's just checkered this one is not it's just a flat basic you know nothing nothing fancy uh, the finish too now I polished this finish on this one a little bit um, and you can see it it actually looks pretty 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 good um, and then with the light but you know in person you can definitely tell this one looks better no doubt about it and this is a 27-3 this is a 28-2 which is the most common um, this one is pinned it's got a pin barrel and recessed cylinders. This one does not. The pin barrel, if you can see that, that pin right there. That's what I mean by a pin barrel. And this one, you can see it does not have that. Does that matter? Uh, not really. It's, it's a collector's thing. It doesn't really matter functionally. Um, it's user preference. Um, this gun right here has got such a light trigger I mean it's just it's amazing Let's see if I can do this on here I mean it's just it's 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 super 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 light I mean it's just really light it's very 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 light I mean too light too light it's it's had a trigger job I know a lot of guys think their Smith & Wesson has had a trigger job and uh, and they haven't they just got really good triggers um, this one is too light, um, way too light. You know, this one right here, it's, it's got a good trigger on it. I can't, I can't do this with, with this one. You know, where you, you know, I can't pull it without moving the gun. This one right here, just sitting on the carpet, <laughs> pulling the trigger. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's light. Suffice to say, it's got about a pound and a half single action trigger. Uh, the trigger pulls on these are, are both good, though. Um, you know, these these old Smiths are just, just classics. So, you know, basically, in short, the, the finish is what's different on these. The finish in that, that top checker. And underneath the trigger guard, this is just like a flat, you know, no polishing whatsoever. You know, that way you don't get rust on it and stuff. Or if you do, you can clean it off a lot easier. Uh, it's an in frame. Both of these are in frame. Both 357s. Um, yeah. I mean, if if you're looking for an in frame, and it's a 357, you want an older one, and you don't want to spend a great deal of money. Um, you can keep your eye open for one of these. You might be able to get one with a little bit of wear on it for a good price. Um, one of the ways that you can tell this from a 44 Magnum right off the bat. 
is if you look at the barrel, see how it's got that taper? See how the barrel's tapered? See it right there as the light runs across the top of it right there? That part right there is tapered. Uh, the the 44s and stuff, 41 Magnums, they they don't have that taper. And, and honestly, that taper, I think, makes these look a little bit better. They, it's just a gorgeous gun. I know the Python gets all the press whenever it comes to, you know, 357s, but, man, a 27, man. And why somebody put that on there, that, that white paint in there, I have no idea. I got it like that, but it is what it is. But the 27 is just, in my opinion, with that checkering on top. You know, the bluing on the <clears throat> on the Python might be a little bit better. I mean, it's it's... It's subjective. I think this is just fine. I, I would probably give it to the Python, but being that checkering on top, that whole thing, you know, like I said, it's it's such fine checkering that the camera isn't even picking it up, really. I mean, you can kind of see it. Kind of see it on there. It's just, it's really cool. Is it necessary? No, no, it's not. But that adds a lot of cost. A lot of cost that, that they really can't get by today with you know hand checker in the top of that uh like that that's that's not done with the machine i don't believe i believe that those are hand hand checkered so <clears throat> that's kind of a a really cool feature of the model 27 the model 29s and stuff do not have that uh you know python versus model 27 well if you're gonna shoot it or anything <laughs> i meant to the Model 27 might be the, the better gun for the just simple fact that you can actually get it cheaper. Um, not that they're cheap, but you can get them cheaper. Uh, then you can get the Model 28. Um, except for several hundred dollars less than, than a Model 27, uh, depending on the condition. If you get one that's got the box and stuff and it's new in the box, it may be, may be um, kind of expensive. But, uh, yeah, just both cool guns, man. That's why I got both of them. You know, I kind of wanted the Model 27 4-inch, and, and like I said, those are hard to find, um, and, and they're expensive. Now, you can get the new ones with the, with the, with the, the lock on it. <clears throat> you know, when, when you're talking about a Model 27 with a lock, I think... I can kind of understand why you would be like, yeah, I don't, I really don't want to lock on it. Uh, some of the newer guns, you know, the 629s, um, 627, because you really can't get this gun without a lock. It doesn't bother as, bother me as much, but on a classic gun, eh, not so much. I say just get a get an older one, but you know, on a newer style gun, don't let a lock keep you from getting it. it it's not that big of a deal. On a on a new model twenty seven, um, yeah. I mean they're they're nice looking. Don't get me wrong, but you know you're if you're getting this, you're kind of going for classic. If you're getting this, and it's not really classic. So that's, I think that's where we got to kind of differentiate between the two. And this is this is a classic. Even that one's a classic. But this is a real classic. This is uh, the registered magnums, which is the same gun as this. You know, is the original 357 it's the original it's the first magnum handgun uh, production anyway 357 so you're looking at the history of the 357 right here one of the reasons why it's it's not as popular now and stuff is because it's it's an end frame and you can go with a 44 um, six rounds and, and a more powerful round so it's kind of a why not go with the 44 as opposed to this, but there's just something about an end frame 357 that's very, very nice. They're heavy. They shoot really good because they're heavy. Um, you know, you know, once upon a time, police did carry this, this model. Six rounds. You know, and they came out with the 19s and 66s, which are K-frames, much smaller. Man, look at that, man. This is the cool, cool picture right there. That's awesome looking. Hey, man, if you don't give a thumbs up just on that part right there, man, what's 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 the matter with you? 
But uh, the 19 and the 66s came out, and it kind of put these two by the wayside. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of what kind of what did it. You know, it was like, why not go with a, a smaller, much lighter gun that holds the same amount of, of, of bullets, you know, at the time, which was six. Um, you know, we kind of know about the K-frames, uh, you know, with their forcing cone. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure if I completely, you know, buy that one. You know, I think that's a little hype, uh, a little propaganda. Not that it couldn't happen. I, I could definitely see it happening easier on a 19 or a 66, you know, a K-frame Magnum than, than one of these two, obviously. Uh, but... I think that you'd be just fine with the K-frame shooting magnums out of it. I don't see really any issue. 125 grain. If you're going to shoot 10,000 rounds of it, then, then maybe you might end up having an issue. But uh, even one of these, you're not going to shoot that many rounds of it out of it. So why even debate about something that's so, you know, goofy? You're most likely going to shoot 357. So those are snap caps in there too, by the way. That's why I pulled the trigger on it. Yeah, I mean, either either one of these guns. Um, this one's going to definitely be more money and a little bit nicer. This one, you can get it looking pretty nice. I mean, you can see that. I, I got it looking pretty nice. Does that hurt the value of it? I don't know. Probably not, because when somebody comes to look at it, they're probably just going to think that it was like that anyway. Uh, but it was much duller when I got it. Much, much flat. And, it, and it was probably because it was old. This is probably how it looked from the beginning. And just, you know, over time, just getting dull and stuff. Whereas these, you know, are just kind of good looking to begin with. You can you can see that. A little, little deeper blooming on this one than on this one. This is more of an industrial type of blooming. But still nice. It's still nice. There's nothing wrong with it. If you can find one of these, if if buddy's selling one or something, and you can find one for for a good price, I say pull the trigger on it. They just they feel good in the hand, and 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 these in frame grips vary from gun to gun, you know, from grip to grip basically. Some of them feel good, some of them don't. I had one pair on a Model 28 that I had before that were way too big. I mean, they I mean it just felt like you could never get high enough up on the gun. Um. That, most of them ain't like that, but <clears throat> just keep that in mind. If you get a pair and, you know, if you pick up one of these and the grips don't feel real great, it could just be the grip. They're, they're different from grip to grip. And there's many grips, but in-frame, especially Smith & Wesson branded in-frame grips are are expensive, so keep that in mind, too. Hold on, I'm trying to clank these together. If you can see that, if you line up... Uh, maybe you can't see it. This is a two and five eighths inch barrel. This one right here isn't quite four, even though it's it's called a four inch. Um, you know the difference between the two isn't. You know you got about three quarters of an inch. So even though this gun is a snub nose, it's not as snub nose as what you think. It just kind of looks that way. Um, and and honestly, the velocity out of this gun may actually be better than this gun because these older ones a lot of times the velocity isn't as great like pythons you look at that pythons velocity are usually way less than smith and wesson so in effect you're getting a, 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 a less powerful gun from from chronograph stuff that i've seen pythons usually aren't real fast shooting guns uh, take that for what it's worth probably not much um, yeah Awesome guns, man. All three of these are awesome, but it's not really about this one. It's about these two. You know, uh, you know, home defense. Eh. You know, I mean, you could, you could. I mean, you may already have one. This may be the only gun you have is a Model Twenty Seven that's been handed down. I say you got one heck of a good gun. You know, especially if it's got some wear on it. You know, where you're not really worried about, you know, uh, rust and stuff. I would say any kind of blued gun. You know, putting it under your pillow or, you know, wherever you put it, you know, underneath your mattress. Uh, it could incur some rust over time. So, take that. Take that into account. Let's 
see a little bit of flat finish there. Cool guns. Pinned and recessed. Pinned and recessed. I do believe these are going to go up in value. They're already going up in value. You used to be able to get them a lot cheaper. Um, they're, they're already going up in value. You know, another 20 years, ain't no telling how much these might go for. <laughs> you know, really. As people see that, that they're more and more and more getting scarce from people losing them and getting stolen, melted, you know, turned into police, whatever, you know. Um, you know, getting thrown away maybe as they get more and more scarce. Um, you know, the price will, will go up on them, as will these right here. But yeah, you can see just two two gorgeous looking guns, man. Two classics. Absolute classics. The Model 27 and Model 28. Virtually identical other than finish. Um, cosmetics is, is, is basically what it is. Cosmetics. Uh, other than this one, you know, it's a little bit older and it's got the pen barrel and recessed chambers. You know, do you need that on the gun? No, you don't. It's, it's a collectible thing. You know, this is just fine. So, yeah, anyways, uh, maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. If nothing else, I think this was pretty good eye candy. I mean, that's a gorgeous picture right there. I can't think of anything better to look at right now. So, hope you liked the video. Thanks.